Big breaking news this morning as Jade Cargill is likely finished with All Elite Wrestling and is expected to be headed to WWE in the near future. Details on that plus AW All In. Well, the real attendance may have actually been revealed as 72,265 people going through the turnstiles at Wembley Stadium as it has been revealed by local government in London. Details on that plus. We have the ratings for NXT this week as Becky Lynch's NXT Women's Championship victory scores big for WWE in the ratings, doing nearly the best ratings and viewership in nearly three years. An update on Edge and his WWE status after he was removed from the internal WWE roster. He has now been added back just under a new section. Samoa Joe wins the Grand Slam title eliminator tournament. He'll be facing MGF next week for the World Championship. A Women's World title match has been announced for AEW Dynamite Grand Slam as well. Sting and Darby Allen tag team match has been announced for next week too. Hangman Page will face Swerve Strickland at Wrestle Dream in Seattle. Konosuke Takeshita has a new name that was revealed last night on Dynamite and an AEW international title match has been announced for AEW Dynamite Grand Slam. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's start off talking about Jade Cargill, a massive shocking report that she is finishing up with All Elite Wrestling. She is already likely done with AEW and is expected to head to WWE. This was broken by Sean Ross Sapp from Fightful Select late last night, earlier this morning, depending on when you're watching this video. But Jade Cargill is likely finished up with All Elite Wrestling, according to as a mentioned Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select who are citing sources close to the situation. Of course, Cargill just made her return at this past week's episode of AEW Collision and quickly set up a match with Chris Statlander for the TBS Championship. Now, to the surprise of many, it was booked for AEW Rampage. And spoiler alert here, if you don't want to be spoiled about the result of it, but considering the story, you kind of know where this one is going. Chris Statlander defeated Jade Cargill clean in their rematch. Now, Fightful Select are reporting that they have been told by AEW sources that this is because as things stands at the moment. Jade Cargill is finishing up with AEW with the September 13 tapings in Cincinnati possibly being her final appearance for the company. Now, Fightful are told that the situation unfolded last week and Cargill was brought back to collision in order to wrap up and put over Chris Statlander clean. Now, Fightful has spoken to sources within both AEW and WWE and they believe that she is indeed headed to WWE. Now, Fightful should specify that they haven't heard of an official offer being made and as is always the case, things can change in the world of pro wrestling, including in a situation like this. So once again, to be clear, Fightful are reporting they haven't heard how long her AEW contract has left on it. They had recently heard there were option years in play, but hadn't heard who held those options, whether or not it was Tony Khan who held the options or actually if it was Jade Cargill who held, held the options. Now, the wide rumor within rosters of both WWE and AEW is that Cargill will be heading to WWE. Now, this comes as quite a surprise, not only considering that Cargill just returned to television, but the report does state that, that was actually to facilitate her wrapping up with the company, but also considering what she had said recently in an interview that just dropped last week, earlier this week, regarding her great working relationship with Tony Khan, and actually that there's no place she'd rather be than with AEW. She said this to the Women's Wrestling Talk podcast. You can see it on the screen right there. When asked if she was still in contact with the AW president, Tony Khan, uh, Cargill says she's always in contact with him and put over how great of a boss he is. She said, quote, I am always. I mean, he's a phenomenal boss. I could hit him up now. He'll probably hit me back up in three minutes. This is a man who has four companies, a professional soccer team, Jacksonville Jaguars. He's busy. He literally comes to every show. He's so passionate. He loves our company. There's no place I'd rather be. He doesn't look at me as a number. He looks at me as a human being. He knows my journey. He understands my purpose in the wrestling community and what I want to achieve. And I don't think you can beat that. 
So again, certainly very complimentary comments. And at the time, many people assumed that that meant she was going to be sticking around in AEW. But now the report is today that she is likely finished with All Elite Wrestling and most likely headed to WWE. What are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on Cargill finishing up with AEW, possibly going to WWE? Do you think this is the best move for her? Do you think she'll be a star in WWE? What do you think she does in WWE? Does she go to NXT? Does she go to the main roster? And what do you think this means for AEW? Is this a case of a bit like Cody Rhodes? Roads, AW letting talent slip through their fingers. Let me know your thoughts as always in the comment section below. Now, this is also a massive story when it comes to AW and possibly their world record claim regarding AW All In being the highest paid attended pro wrestling event ever might be in a little bit of trouble here because the UK government has thrown a wrench in AW celebration of the All In pay per view at London's Wembley Stadium as it appears that the number of people in the stadium was well under the announced paid attendance of 81,035. Now, according to a Freedom of Information request published on the website, What Do They Know? The turnstile count for AW All In was 72,265, meaning the number of fans that passed through the turnstiles in Wembley Stadium, putting it not only well under the announced paid attendance number, it is also well below the turnstile count for WWE WrestleMania 32 in Arlington, Texas, which had 80,709 or 79,800 in attendance, depending on who you ask, because there were different possible counts when it comes to that as well. Now, this is actually the Freedom of Information um, request. You can actually see the, the statement here that was posted. Uh, it says, quote, I can confirm that Brent Council holds the information you have requested. See below. The actual numbers registered entering the stadium through the turnstiles was 72,265. This is reflective of what attended on the night and not the total number of tickets sold or no-shows, etc. So, so the suggestion is that the, the idea that tickets were bought and people didn't turn up, that is still a possibility, but many people are suggesting, well, it's unlikely that that amount of people didn't show up. Now, as I mentioned, the quotes mentioned the actual number, uh, 72,265. AEW, of course, announced the paid attendance for the event as 81,035 and called it a new worldwide record for pro wrestling. The final estimate from WrestleTix of tickets distributed for All In was 83,131. Now, WrestleNomics are reporting that they were told by a source that a typical AEW event has a drop count, also known as a turnstile count, that is about 80% to 90% of the paid attendance or tickets distributed. In this case, 72,265 is 89% of 83,131. The turnstile count or drop count simply refers to the number of tickets scanned as attendees enter the building, not necessarily as they go through physical turnstiles, which many venues don't use. The turnstile count, as I mentioned, for WWE's WrestleMania 32 in 2016 in Arlington, Texas, was higher than All In's number. The number of fans who entered the building for WrestleMania 32 was 80,709, according to the Arlington Police, a number more more than 8,000 higher than 72,265. It's unclear how many suite attendees may weigh into the numbers for either event as well. So certainly a lot of people are now talking about this because it does put the number into disrepute. And many people are wondering, did AEW make up the number? Did they inflate the number? What does this mean? What do you think it means? Is this the actual real number, the actual real attendance for people inside the stadium? Many people did say they look like they're empty spots. But a lot of people said, look, Wembley's a big stadium. It has 90,000 fans for soccer matches. More people were on the field as you can see on the screen right there so what are your thoughts on this number and what do you think about AEW's previous number that boasted the record for the highest paid attendance is that still possible is that still feasible or is what the local council saying is that accurate as well now one person who has reacted to this new number and this new information is New Japan Pro Wrestling star Will Ospreay and he is bemused that the turnstile count for AEW's All In show was less than the confirmed attendance of 81,035 Five. The English star referenced the attendance figures in a video on social media, which he later removed. 
Now in the video, Osprey revealed he got a tattoo on his arm which specifically mentions the attendance figure of 81,035. The tattoo may no longer hold any significance considering the new report says that 72,265 people passed through the turnstiles at Wembley Stadium, not the advertised and announced 81,035. Here's Osprey's reaction to this and it looks like he can't believe what he's reading and hearing. Bruv, you cannot make this f***ing up. I am currently in Japan. I've had no f***ing sleep. I am tired. And I wake up. This is the worst f***ing day of my life. Do you know how hard it was for me to get a tattoo? You, my mum hates them, bruv. They announced it to everyone. They announced it as the... I now there's 81,000 people. I've got this f***ing thing on my arm. <laughs> Now let's talk about the ratings for NXT this week because big time Bex, she's ratings Rebecca all over again because Becky Lynch gave NXT a big time boost in its viewership and TV ratings, driving the show to highs it has not seen in years. Data published by WrestleNomics shows Tuesday night's episode drew an average of 850,000 viewers overall, a 26% increase from last week's episode. The total viewership Tuesday is the most for the program since October 28, 2020. 20. Now, 335,000 of those viewers were in the coveted key demographic of people aged 18 to 49. That equals a 0.26 18 to 49 rating, a 40% increase from last week and the highest for NXT since September 1st, 2020. Again, that's over three years. Lynch, of course, defeated Tiffany Stratton for the NXT Women's Championship in Tuesday night's main event. A look at the quarter-hour data shared by WrestleNomics reveals the show gained more than 200,000 viewers overall during the match, with the viewership peaking at 1.06 million viewers during the show's eight-minute overrun after 10 p.m. Eastern. WrestleNomics also reported that the clip of Lynch's victory on WWE's YouTube channel drew nearly 400,000 views by Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, more than tripling the next Next most viewed clip from the show. The performance of Tuesday Night's NXT puts the show in position to challenge for a same week TV ratings victory over AEW Dynamite. Last Wednesday's Dynamite drew an average of 887,000 viewers overall, 409,000 were in the 18 to 49 demographic. So, this is just showing certainly that the main roster influence is working when it comes to viewership and ratings. And the question now becomes do you think NXT will defeat AEW Dynamite in terms of the ratings and in terms of the total viewership? Let me know your thoughts about that too because certainly it's got a lot of people talking. Speaking of getting people talking, Edge's future in WWE has got quite a few people talking at the moment, doesn't it? Because Edge, is he leaving WWE? Is he part of the internal WWE roster? What's going on with Edge right now? Well, another update has emerged on the WWE status of Edge as speculation continues about what his next move may be. Edge has been absent from WWE television since the August 18 episode of SmackDown, which was billed as his 25th anniversary in WWE. He defeated Sheamus in the main event of that SmackDown episode in his hometown of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Coming out of that, it emerged that it was actually the last match on Edge's WWE contract, a contract he's publicly stated expires at the end of this month, September. While there have yet to be any concrete updates on his big decision, when that contract does indeed come up, there is something of an up update on his status within WWE. As we spoke about yesterday, PW Insider reported that Edge had been removed from WWE's internal roster. However, that's not the end of the story here. Edge was in fact removed from the internal roster of current wrestlers, but not from the internal roster entirely. Instead, he's now listed on what's been described as a miscellaneous talent list, which has names that aren't currently active on either Raw or SmackDown. Other names on that list, according to PW Insider, include The Undertaker, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Big E, Titus O'Neil, and Braun Strowman. It had been reported shortly after his match with Sheamus that there was a belief in WWE that Edge would be leaving the company and heading to AEW. Edge obviously neither confirmed nor denied that, instead just saying he's got a difficult decision to make. And as of the last we heard from him, he still hasn't made it right now. So as of right now, the latest about Edge is that, yes, he was removed from the internal WWE roster, but for active talent uh, and is still technically listed on the roster. So we're kind of in the realms of technicalities right now. What do you think Edge is going to do next? What do you think? 
think is is going to be his next move? Is it going to be to stay with WWE, to go to AEW, or possibly to retire? That's the big question, certainly, isn't it? Now, let's switch gears and talk about Dynamite last night because it was a show on television. And Samoa Joe will challenge MJF for the AEW World Championship next Wednesday on the Dynamite Grand Slam special at New York's Arthur Ashe Stadium. Joe defeated Roderick Strong in the final of the Grand Slam title eliminator tournament on Wednesday night's Dynamite to earn his title shot, forcing Strong to submit to the Kikina Clutch. Strong, specifically, he is uh, his already ailing neck, which was in anguish following the match, becoming even more... Uh, but even more so when Adam Cole made his way down to the ring to check on his longtime friend. After Strong was put on a stretcher, Cole, alongside Matt Tavern and Mike Bennett, accompanied him up the ramp towards the backstage area. However, when Cole paused at the top of the ramp, Joe re-emerged and choked him out, sending a clear message to Cole's current best friend, MJF. Now, MJF himself was not in attendance at Wednesday's Dynamite, nursing his own neck injury suffered at the hands of Joe. During a pre-recorded backstage segment, it was made clear that he will be cleared to compete for next Wednesday's show. Joe will enter next week's title match already holding the Ring of Honor World Television Championship a title that he's held for more than 500 days ever since he dethroned Minoru Suzuki in April of 2022. So Samoa Joe versus MJF is set for next week's show. Also set for next week's show, an AEW Women's World Championship match, Tony Storm is ready for her close-up. On Wednesday's Dynamite, Storm bested Dr. Britt Baker, Hikaru Shida, and Nyla Rose in a four-way match to earn a shot at Soraya's AEW Women's World Championship at Dynamite Grand Slam next Wednesday at New York's Arthur Ashe Stadium. A former women's champion herself, Storm has undergone a transformation into an old Hollywood starlet, becoming a highlight of recent episodes of AW television. Initially a member of the outcast with Ruby Soho and Soraya, Storm has seemingly had a falling out with her former on-screen friends, even costing Soho her match for the TBS Championship at All Out earlier this month. Quote, I advise you to all tune in and just watch as I continue to become a bigger and bigger star, Storm told the Daily Star last month. And it's going to be wonderful for everyone who's watching because we like violence and there's going to be plenty of it. So her opportunity is set for next week in Queens at Arthur Ashe Stadium. Also set for next week, a tag team match involving Darby Allen and Sting. The final card for the third annual AEW Dynamite Grand Slam television special is nearly set. On last night's AEW Dynamite, Christian Cage challenged Sting and Darby Allen to a rematch from All In, where he and Swerve Strickland lost to the duo at Wembley Stadium. However, this time around, Cage will team with his prized protege, Luchasaurus, instead of Strickland. Cage had some choice words for Darby after AEW's resident Daredevil and Nick Wayne defeated Daddy Magic Matt Menard and Cool Hand Ange in a tag team match. Very impressive victory, Cage told Darby, before explaining why he's unable to stomach the loss at All In. I just want to remind everyone of one thing. I did not take the loss for my team in that match. And the second thing is, I didn't have my regular partner with me, did I? So it's time to right that wrong. Christian then proceeded to issue the challenge, which Sting and Darby accepted, as confirmed by the announcers later on in the broadcast. Interestingly, the duo of Sting and Darby Allen was victorious in the first two installments of Dynamite Grand Slam and will now get the opportunity to go 3-0 at Arthur Ashe Stadium. At last year's event, the duo defeated the House of Blacks, Buddy Matthews and Brody King in a no-disqualification match. At the inaugural event, they defeated FTR after Sting made Dax Harwood tap out to the Scorpion at Deathlock. Uh, besides that match, of course, there are several other matches that have been announced for the show, which we'll get to later on. One match that has been announced, not for next week though, but actually for the Wrestle Dream pay-per-view in Seattle, is Hangman Adam Page and Swerve Strickland. In what will arguably be the biggest pay-per-view match of his career, Swerve Strickland will come face-to-face -face with former AEW World Champion Hangman Adam Page at WrestleDream on October 1st. The match was made official on last night's AEW Dynamite after Strickland issued the challenge to Page, who had just defeated Strickland's Mogul Embassy affiliate Brian Cage in a singles bout. Just as Page prepared to answer Strickland's challenge, he was ambushed by Cage until the Young Bucks saved their elite stablemate from the beatdown and then ran off Cage and Prince Nana from the ring. An irate Strickland looked from the top of the ramp as the announcers confirmed Strickland versus Page for Wrestle Dream. The rivalry between Page and Strickland began two weeks ago when the two men had a heated exchange in the ring that ended with Page getting laid out by the Mogul Embassy. During their exchange, Strickland brought up the fact that Page was positioned as AEW's franchise player when the promotion started in 2019 and has been handed countless opportunities that someone like him hasn't been afforded. Strickland proclaimed that he had already have been AEW's first black world champion if given the same opportunities as the elite member and that he was tired of waiting around for his turn. 
The segment was widely praised by fans and wrestling pundits alike, with many calling it Strickland's best piece of work under the AEW banner. Now, as of this recording, the only other match confirmed for the Wrestle Dream show, of course, is Brian Danielson versus Zack Sabre Jr. So two matches now have been announced for the big show, the first time ever pay-per-view in Seattle. Konosuke Takeshita has a bit of a rebranding. In a segment on last night's AEW Dynamite, it was announced that one star will be rebranding and should be referred to with a new name moving forward. Coming to the ring to reveal a painting of their next target, Don Callis and Konosuke Takeshita also used the interview segment with Tony Schiavone to break some news. Don Callis announced that since Konosuke Takeshita has beaten Kenny Omega twice now, he has surpassed being referred to as simply an ace. Instead, from henceforth, we are all to refer to Konosuke Takeshita as the Alpha Konosuke Takeshita. According to Don Callis, the Alpha doesn't feel he takes everything he can take and then takes some more, playing into reveal of the next target for them both, promising to break Kenny Omega's heart, Callis revealed a portrait featuring Kota Ibushi. Ending the segment emotionally, Callis stabbed the portrait with a screwdriver for maximum drama. So it looks like at some point we're getting Konosuke Takeshita versus Kota Ibushi possibly at Wrestle Dream, although that wasn't confirmed just yet. Finally, the International Championship match has been confirmed for next week at Dynamite Grand Slam as well. AEW International Champion John Moxley was up against the odds on Wednesday's Dynamite, not only facing the much larger Big Bill, but his opponent also had Ricky Starks in his corner, providing a distraction throughout the title match. Despite Bill and Starks' best efforts, Moxley retained his title, tapping out Big Bill with a triangle choke in front of Moxley's hometown crowd in Cincinnati, Ohio. After the match, a big brawl broke out with Moxley, Brian Danielson and Claudio Castagnoli fighting off Big Bill and Starks. In the aftermath of the brawl, it was announced that Moxley's next title defense will be against Ray Phoenix at Dynamite Grand Slam at Arthur Ashe Stadium next Wednesday in Queens, New York. Phoenix got into Moxley's face backstage after the announcement. The win over Big Bill was Moxley's third defense of the title since winning it from Orange Cassidy at All Out on September 3rd. Moxley defeated AR Fox on last week's Dynamite and then Action Andretti on the most recent episode of Collision. Moxley is the third champion in the short history of the championship. But there you go, guys. This latest pro wrestling news for you today. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. As always, let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.